Sutra. What is the Bodhisattva's past giving? When these Bodhisattvas hear about the merit and virtue of the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas of the past, they do not become attached. They understand its lack of existence. They do not give rise to discriminations. They are not greedy for it, not obsessed by it, and they do not grasp or seek it. They are without a place of reliance. They see dharmas as being like a dream, devoid of any solid substance. They do not give rise to thoughts about good rules, nor do they rely on them. It is only for the sake of teaching and transforming that they cling to living beings. They become perfected in the Buddha Dharma and then proclaim it. Moreover, they further contemplate all past dramas and realize that even when they are sought throughout the ten directions, they cannot be guarded. Having had this thought, they completely relinquish all past dramas. This is called past giving. Commentary Forest of Merit and Virtue Bodhisattva asks, what is the Bodhisattva's past giving? He asks a rhetorical question and the text that follows answers this question. When these Bodhisattvas hear about the merit and virtue of the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas of the past, they do not become attached. They understand its lack of existence. They realize that ultimately even merit and virtue are empty. They do not give rise to discriminations regarding the past Buddhas and Bodhisattvas. They are not greedy for it, not obsessed by it. That is, they don't keep thinking about the merit and virtue, and they do not grasp or seek it. They don't grasp or seek what the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas of the past are master in merit and virtue. They are without a place of reliance. They see dramas as being like a dream devoid of any solid substance. They understand that all dramas are illusory, like a dream or transformation, and ultimately not real. They do not give rise to thoughts about good rules, nor do they rely on them. They don't think about the good rules of themselves or the Bodhisattvas and uh, all the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas of the past, and they don't rely on them. It is only for the sake of teaching and transforming that they cling to living beings. They only appear to be attached to living beings, but that's only because of their dedication to save them. They become perfected in the Buddha Dharma and then proclaim it. Because they want, so living, they want living beings to accomplish the position of a Buddha and fulfill body, they then speak the Buddha Dharma for these living beings. Moreover, they further contemplate all past dramas of the ten directions and realize that even when they are sought throughout the ten directions, they cannot be guarded. Having had this thought, they completely relinquish all past dramas. This is called past giving. This is cultivating one of the ten kinds of giving in the treasury of giving of the ten inexhaustible treasuries. Sutra. What is the Bodhisattva's future giving? When these Bodhisattvas hear how all future Buddhas will cultivate, they understand their lack of existence. They do not grasp at appearances. They take no special delight in getting reborn in any Buddha land. They are not obsessed or attached, and they do not give rise to weariness. They do not use their gurus to transfer to them, nor do they because of them retreat from their gurus. Commentary Forest of Merit and Virtual Bodhisattva, having finished speaking about past giving, says, what is the Bodhisattva's future giving? The following text is in answer to this question. When these Bodhisattvas hear how all future Buddhas will cultivate, after these Bodhisattvas hear of the practices the Buddhas of the future cultivate, they understand their lack of existence. They understand that all dharmas are empty. They do not grasp at appearances. They do not attach to the marks and characteristics of what all Buddhas of the future will cultivate. They take 
no special delight in getting reborn in any Buddha land. While residing in their own particular country, they wouldn't want to get reborn in some other Buddha land. They are not obsessed or attached. They don't ponder over the dramas all these Buddhas cultivate and they aren't attached to the dramas which all Buddhas cultivate and they do not give rise to weariness. Now, if they aren't attached to them, if they don't delight in them, if they don't greedily seek these things, then is it the case that they dislike them, that they are tired of them, do they get wary of the practices that all the Buddhas of the future cultivate? No, they don't worry of them. They do not use their gurus to transfer to them. They don't use the gurus which they themselves have cultivated and transfer their merit and virtue to all Buddhas of the future. Because they aren't attached to anything, nor do they because of them retreat from their gurus. They won't think that because the gurus cultivated by all Buddhas of the future are so difficult to practice that they decide to retreat. Despite the difficulty, they still don't retreat from their own gurus or their resolve for Buddhi. Sutra, they are constant and diligent in their cultivation, never renouncing it. It is only because they wish to gather in living beings that they make use of such states. So they speak for them what is true and natural and cause them to become mature within the Buddha Dharma. And yet these dramas do not exist in any location, nor do they lack a location. They are not inside, not outside, not near and not far. They also have this thought, if dramas do not exist, then I cannot fail to renounce them. This is called future giving. Commentary They are constant and diligent in their conservation. Why does it say that the Buddha, the Bodhisattvas do not retreat from their gurus and resolve on Bodhi? It is because they constantly and diligently cultivate. Constant means never letting it be cut off. Diligent means vigorous, courageous, and energetic. It's not like the way most of us cultivate. We cultivate for one, two, three, four, or five days and then decide that it is not very interesting and there's nothing to be obtained from it, and so we stop cultivating. This is not constantly and diligently cultivating. Constant and diligent cultivation is constantly being courageous and vigorous from the very first thought of resolve on body all the way to the point of becoming a Buddha and all the time in between. It is having a great resolve on body and cultivating the six perfections and the 10,000 practices. The Bodhisattvas diligently cultivate the Dharma, never renouncing it. They never stop or abandon it. They don't stop being vigorous even for an instant. They're never lazy for an instant. Their cultivation never comes to a stop. They never relax or let go of it. And they never stop cultivating. It is only because they wish to gather in living beings that they make use of such states. So gather in all living beings is like using a magnet to draw in iron fillings. They draw them all in. So they speak for them what is true and natural. When the Bodhisattvas speak Dharma, they speak true and natural Dharma and cause them to become mature within the Buddha Dharma. They cause living beings to accomplish the Buddha way a little bit sooner. Also, they use the Dharma to teach and transform living beings. And yet, they realize that these dramas do not exist in any location. This means one shouldn't be attached to drama. So, dramas do not exist in any location, nor do they lack a location. Upon hearing that they don't exist and that you shouldn't be attached to the drama, yet you shouldn't go to the other extreme and not use the drama. It's not that way either. Rather, you should speak in accord with the situations that you encounter. Without the situation, the drama is empty. 
but even at the time you speak the drama, there is no drama. There should be no attachment to the drama spoken or to the speaking of it. Moreover, they are not inside, not outside. The drama does not arise from within, nor does it come from without. You should think this way and not be attached. It's not near and not far. The drama isn't close by, nor is it far away. They, the Bodhisattvas, also have this thought, if dramas do not exist, then I cannot fail to renounce them. If one says that no dramas are true and not true, then how can one be attached to drama? Basically, they are still and extinct, which means they are non-existent. Hypothetically, there is drama, but basically there is no drama. So, how can one be attached to drama? You ought to relinquish it. You should put it down. This is called future giving. This is the future giving which the great bodhisattvas cultivate.